Why does everybody keep on hiring me? All of my work is shit. Everything is awesome. Well done, Chris Miller, well done. Thank you. But he's not the only one we should congratulate. Our own Jennifer Lee has gotten a job writing and directing at Disney. Oh, it's nothing, just the most famous studio in the world. Well, I suppose now we can bring her in on our real gamble. What gamble? Oh, every time a new filmmaker comes along, we make an impossible dare to see if they can pull it off. Yes, and they, in turn, make dares back. Really? And seeing how you're the newcomer with Disney, I bet you can't make an animated film that points out all the faults of the past Disney films, has two female heroes, one of them a queen, Ooh. and have her sing a song so popular, even boys will be singing. Ooh, ooh. Okay, I like a challenge, especially in this demographic ruled by 13-year-old boys. They're always the most profitable. But what about you, Mr. Peyton Reed? What about me? If I achieve that, then you have to make a successful superhero movie where the hero shrinks down to the size of an ant. Ooh, 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 ooh. You know shrinking films are box office poison right now. What's the matter? Not taking my raise. Oh! <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> oh, I'll call. Not that Miller and Lord over there have the balls to do so. <gasps> hey, we're just as ballsy as either of you. Yeah, prove it. I bet that we could do a product placement movie so good that we could name the movie after the product and nobody would care. Yeah, and people would even be upset that it wasn't nominated for Best Animated Feature. <laughs> Say... Mind if I play? No! 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 What? Why not? You suck at this game, Shyamalan. Yeah. What's this idea that you can make trees scary? Yeah, it's later down the road. This idea is guaranteed to show you how talented I am. Wait, isn't this the one that Disney didn't understand, so you stormed out even though they were gonna fund it anyway? Who does? that? Yes, I heard about this. You said Disney didn't respect individualism. There are a bunch of hacks who didn't realize my brilliance. Yeah? And what is this brilliance? All right. The main character is named Story. Out! Not happening. She's an ancient creature called a narf. Oh, honey, you can't do this. And she's being chased by scrunts, but saved by Tartutix. You heard a bum down the street shouting stuff like this. Oh, come on! Even I'm not that high! I will show the world that I am so good that I can make something so silly absolutely amazing. I mean, what else could happen to this movie? Let's get this baby started! While many people see The Happening as Shyamalan's funniest so bad it's good film, I challenge them with the absolute mad ravings of Lady in the Water. Sure, it's slower and doesn't have quite as many silly performances, but the story is so insane, so ego-stroking, so freaking bizarre that if a well-known filmmaker's name wasn't attached to it, you'd swear it was written on the walls of a mental institution. There's so much to talk about, so let's not waste any time. Let's end Shyamalan month with my favorite bad movie of his, Lady in the Water. <laughs> It starts off with the backwash, I mean backstory, of this seemingly simple fable. Once man and those in the water were linked. They inspired us. Man listened, and it became real. But man does not listen very well. You just said they did. Man's need to own everything led him deeper into land. The world of man became more violent. War upon war played out as there were no guides to listen to. Well, if they're so good at guiding people, how did they let this happen to begin with? A handful of their precious young ones have been sent. There are laws that are meant to keep the young ones safe, but they are sent at great risk to their lives. But wait, if there's laws to keep them safe, then why would they be at great risk? Sometimes men take matters into their own hands. That's not what you said, movie represented now by Jack Nicholson performance. You said they were safe, but now they're at great risk. So they shouldn't be in any danger, should they, movie? You snotty little bastard. Why don't you just end with how every humanity sucks story ends, saying how man has forgotten how to listen. Man have forgotten how to listen.
listen. Show us the way, movie. We know you have it, even though in the first two minutes you already have tons and tons of problems, but we have faith in you. We then cut to Paul Giamatti. He's some kind of creature. Della, it's not a creature. There's no such thing as creatures. A creature's just something you can't identify. Like the tone of this movie. A new tenant seems to be staying at the Cove, an apartment complex Giamatti works at, and he's a movie critic named Mr. Farber. Mr. He! Buenos D-ass! Now, Mr. Farber, this is Young Soon Choi. She lives with her mother in 8A. She's a, a student at the university. Hey, if Shyamalan would be nice enough, maybe he'll cut to a shot that actually shows her face. Nope. Well, at least he held on a shot for a while. That automatically equals genius, you know. But not as genius as talking directly into the camera. Another typical Shyamalan trope. Tell him it's like an experiment. I'm like a scientist. It's fascinating how greedy one can get with their artsiness. In most movies, these kind of shots are used sparingly to establish mood. But with Shyamalan, he uses it like how the director of Battlefield Earth uses tilted shots. Weird angles sometimes. Weird angles always! We're, we're brilliant, brilliant! We're brilliant! Oh, we do the brilliant dance! But who cares? It's time to figure out what stupid quirk this guy has. Because as always, any quirk, no matter how stupid, always equals a developed character. Let's see what we have in our kitchen. Let's see what we have here. Um, you like hot dogs? Expired water? Ah, here we are, working out half of your body for no reason. Most people say, hey, what's wrong with you, Reggie? Why are you only working out on one side of your body? Remember, it doesn't need to make sense. You just have to say that director has a style, and therefore it's good. It's the law. Hey. 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 It's a welcome bow shot there. That looks effortlessly done, like there was no effort put into it whatsoever. It's almost as good as this one of Giamatti ending his day and the camera slowly tilting up to reveal... Absolutely nothing! You know, some... Something visually interesting there might have been nice. Was even the moon like- No, oh, hell no, I'm not being in this shit. <laughs> Mermando? No, but trust me, it's something just as equally ridiculous. He goes out to the pool to inspect when... <laughs> he was underwater, now he's not. Now he's back underwater, now he's not. Now he's out of the water, he slips, he goes back into the water, tries to get out, says nah, and he's suddenly in his room. Well, that was as easy to follow as a moth in a snowstorm. There does, however, seem to be a wet, naked woman in his room. Oh, not this again. Oh, at least this one's alive. Where are you from? Do you feel an awakening? <sighs> Is that like a happening? Why don't you just replace all your dialogue with, Do you feel an ing ing ing? I don't even know your name. My name is Story. Oh, yes, you heard that correctly. It's that kind of movie. I have two siblings, an older sister named Long Story and a younger sister named Short Story. I have a very honest mother we named True Story, an aging father named Old Story, a dead grandfather named Ghost Story, and for some reason all of them remind me of my two pets, Cock and Bull Story. What I'm trying to say is, that name is stupid. So he gives her a shirt, turning her into a cover story, and sleeps the night away holding her in his arms. Because this really wasn't creepy enough yet. Tell me how Didn't catch that? Yeah, you did. The name of her species is Narf. And not only that, they say this word all the time like it's a totally common name. If a Narf... A thousand Narfs. The Narf has come. The Madam Narf. Narf? A Narf. What was Blaff already taken or Plonk? Look out! We have to save the Nyan -nye -nyes. They're on the run for the Kerplockety Blocks! Bitch, you for real? He tries to carry her outside, but sees a wolf waiting in the distance. I serve the nothing, which apparently this film has an abundance of. <laughs> what? What? What's going on? What? Watching that scene, what can you even say about it? 
It looks like he's carrying an anorexic Julia Roberts to their honeymoon suite while she wants the pool to pull her finger just before a steroid chia pet eats them alive. What is this? I, what is this? So he decides to ask someone who would obviously know all about mythical creatures, Rufio. Could you look up the word narf for me? I'm sure you've come across them from your adventures in Neverland. It's an Eastern bedtime story, Mr. Heap. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't insult Eastern storytelling like that. I think the correct answer is, oh, that sounds like a word from the same idiot who came up with Cypher Rage. Very common Eastern name. But her mother knows all about it. What are the odds? And she says the Narf, sorry, that's going to take some getting used to, has to meet the Chosen One so that she can inspire him. She will return with the great eagle on a giant eagle. They, of course, cut out the scene where she ate five pot brownies before saying this, but you get the idea. So Giamatti looks for this chosen one whose story says is a writer. Though, again, you could just replace all the dialogue with, What's your quirk? She's very good with animals. Mm-hmm, and your quirk? Crossword puzzles. And your quirk? Let's make up a witty phrase. Baby's on the half tip. <laughs> Jesus, she can't even do stoners right. That's not how a stoner screams. That's one of the right crispy elves watching another one die. Ah, snap! Of course, Giamatti is so focused on finding a writer that he completely overlooks the person he's known for years that is a writer. How's the writing? Done. But story has been eavesdropping in his diary to learn about his past. A night a man entered your home when you were not there. He stole many things and killed your wife and children. That is when you stopped being happy. Brilliant deduction there, Nancy Drew. Any other obvious dots you'd like to connect? When I hit my head, that's when my head hurts. When my butt farts, that's when the air smells bad. When I run in high heels, people will focus more on that rather than how dumb the rest of the movie is. Why don't you get suited up in your proper uniform? But Giamatti introduces the writer to her and... Take a wild guess who plays him. No way sent in that form. Ugh. That's right, the writer who really has lost his muse. Yeah, take a good look there, Shyamalan. That's the closest to story you'll ever get. And have seemingly irrelevant and tedious dialogue that seems to regurgitate. Nice meeting you. I'm so very happy we saw each other. So he's inspired to go write Devil as Giamatti tries to get story back home, but the grass hyena is still out there. What's happening? I thought it was gonna be safe! We're okay now. Thank God he can't climb stairs. So he tries to get more information from the Korean peacock, who seems totally fine interrupting her clubbing to talk fairy tales. She said only a rogue scrunt will break the law of that night because most scrunts are afraid. Afraid of what? Tartutic. Oh my god. Scrunts, narfs, tartutics. These all sound like cartoon characters sneezing. Just look at Giamatti's face after hearing all this. He's like, well, I'm in a bomb. This whole thing reads like a drunk mother reading a half-assed bedtime story to her kid. This is a story about... Story... The character's name is Story? Uh, yes. Yep. And she is an ancient... Narf! Uh, Narf? Uh-huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. She's running, running away from the the mean scrunt. Scrunt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it all took place in modern times. Good night. Well, it's better than the time she said the trees did it. Fearing this story is sounding 100% like coke ravings, Korean Britney Spears brings back the dramatic tone. Just try to listen to this with any hint of seriousness. A thousand knots is about a rare knot who comes once in a generation of a knot who is called the Madam Knot. A scrunt will do anything to kill a Madam Knot, even forget his fears of the tattoo tip. Will she know that she's a Madam Knot? Okay. I'm sure Shyamalan is hearing this really intense, dramatic story, but 
to the rest of the world, all we can hear is a thousand narfs, rare narf, the madam narf, kill a madam narf, the madam narf herself. Does she know that she's a madam narf? Once in a generation of a narfs. I would give anything if the twist to this movie was that the entire time it was Pinky and the Brain trying to take over the world. Literally, every single problem would be fixed if they just do that twist. It's a Warner Brothers movie, make it happen! Speaking of which, the master writer himself is told that his writing is going to change the world and give inspiration, I shit you not here, to the future president. This boy will become leader of this country and begin a movement of great change. But also, yeah, gets even better. His ideas will be so dangerous that someone will eventually take his life because of them. And yet, he still chooses to write the story, sacrificing himself not only for his art, but for the world. Wow. Is it windy on that egotistical high horse that you built for yourself? I mean, Christ, you can see his boner growing with every praising word speak of you and your words. Your book will be the seeds of many of his great thoughts. It will be the seeds of change. Ooh, now that's a messy story. So Giamatti is told that Rufio's mother will only tell the rest of the story if she can see him like a child. You have to make her see you as a child. Innocent. So, I can't even. Just watch. Tell her it's a beautiful story. Um, are there are there any parts that might be good to hear? <laughs> okay, so let's say this represents the world of sanity, and this represents the edge of sanity, and this represents the world of insanity. You would be on Mars, you are so friggin' gone! Because we have no idea where the hell you are to come up with a scene this goddamn bonkers! I mean, what the hell is going on? Is this what you do with all your Oscar-nominated actors? Make them look like they're jerking off sideways while peeing like a dog? That's not acting like a child, that's acting like three lobotomies were given to you! In maple syrup! What are you?! So the NARF can't say anything about her world for I didn't really feel like a reasons, but it's okay because she touches her ear to answer yes or no questions as that doesn't count for reasons. So there's a symbolist, a guardian, a healer, and a guild he's supposed to find in order to help her. And before you say anything, yes, this simple bedtime story is as goddamn complicated as a freaking D&D game. Do you know who the symbolist or interpreter is? I don't know. Let's roll the dice to find out. So he goes to the crossword guy and his increasingly strange son. This picture on the cereal box is supposed to make you feel happy. I feel sad like that time you forgot to pick me up at school. Are we in Wonderland? He finds the others as well and takes them to a naked, cut-up lady he's keeping in his shower. This raises no concerns. Interpreter will tell us what to do. Nine letters across is the word essential. I thought, I thought, I thought that was weird. Mm. Really? That's weird? You're using a crossword puzzle to predict the future in front of a naked woman who's been kidnapped by the sideways guy? And that's friggin' weird! Who does that? The funny thing is, even by bedtime story standards, there's practically no action in any of this. I mean, did Shyamalan actually read this to his kids every night? And then they sat around the shower for a bit doing crosswords as Mr. Keep toured the apartments for a fifth time to talk to even more people. Daddy, can you read us Snow White? Oh, kids, that story doesn't have nearly enough references to another story to make it interesting. This is a bedtime story for a new generation. But it's boring! We can barely stay awake! That means it's working. So he apparently can see the scrunt by walking backwards and looking in a mirror. Why? Because it's less complicated than doing jumping jacks and looking through a Fruit Loop. Just get used to nothing being explained. The scrunt scares him away, but to be fair, you were asking Paul Giamatti to protect you. What do you think was going to happen? In fact, 
You saved him the first time! You really thought this was the guy who was gonna be on top of things? There is no originality left in the world, Mr. Heat. So they work on a new strategy. This grunt will hide unless he cannot hide in his environment. Doesn't that go without saying? He'll hide unless he can't hide? So they decide to throw a party to distract this grunt. Yeah, always good to throw other people's lives in there. As we're realizing getting closer and closer to the end that this really shouldn't have been called Lady in the Water. She barely does a friggin' thing! What they should have called it is whispering, because that's all anybody does! It is not you. I'm sorry. I can hear myself finding your purpose. It is not time. You haven't written anything. The west of this land will grow up in a home. Turn it up! Turn it up! So they wait for the eagle to come and get her, as apparently nobody in the party would notice that. But hey, if they don't notice a grass dog attacking a woman and dragging her into the woods, I guess they wouldn't notice that either. Oh, by the way, a grass dog attacks her and drags her into the woods. Oh no, this is terrible! What should we do? More crosswords! Big shock, they start to ask, what if this is all a little crazy? Why are you so certain that I am the interpreter and they are the guild? I asked someone what kind of person would be so arrogant to presume to know the intention of another human being who has put this young girl's life in jeopardy. What heartless demon who gives points of view on art has doomed mankind for all eternity? <gasps> the Critic! <laughs> Only he praised Shyamalan, I mean any random writers of their genius. But no, he had to point out the faults of movies like Signs, I mean any random story! This is all so obviously about Shyamalan, I mean Shyamalan, I mean Shyamalan, I mean you! If you were Shyamalan. Look at this, he writes the critics so one-dimensionally that he actually confuses real life for a movie. It's precisely the moment where the mutation or beast will attempt to kill an unlikable side character. In stories where there has been no prior cursing, nudity, killing, the unlikable character will narrowly escape. He may even be given a humorous moment to allow the audience to feel good about it. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is really hard. It's really hard for me to get through this. I just, cause, cause that's all they are. That's all critics are. It's literally just, my life is a movie, everything is connected to movie, I am robot, I judge and hate everything, there is no personal vendetta going on at all, it is about you, the personal artist at home, it is not about one individual person who probably is in this film somewhere, I mean, I can't see him at all, it's just too subtle, but maybe he's in the movie. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, this is so unprofessional. I, I, I should stay serious, I, that won't happen again. I like just get out a little bit more. <laughs> okay, okay, won't happen again, I promise. <clears throat> so, after that stellar satire of criticism, really SNL worthy, they start to wonder if anyone else could possibly be the interpreter. The hands of the guild will be needed plus two others. It is a ceremony of seven sisters. Sisters, the guild is women. You will need a man who has no secrets and one whose opinion is highly respected as witnesses. To touch together with their hearts as one to bring strength to the moment. Nice joy. You will need a man who has no secrets and one whose opinion is highly respected as witnesses. <laughs> A little boy with incredible detail is predicting the future of an ancient civilization by staring at cereal boxes. Cereal boxes! Oh my god! I'm crying! I'm actually crying! This is so funny! What is he going to see? The cookie crook will go cuckoo for Cocoa Boss when Captain Crunch's neck goes snack, crackle, and pop, and it'll be great! Were the fortune cookies too hard to understand? <laughs> I can't breathe! All 
must hurry. This will all be over in moments. Now, on to the spice rack, where I will predict the second coming of Jesus! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, I just came a bit. I read it wrong. I thought it said she will lead a ceremony of seven sisters to bring strength to the moment. But it really just said, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. It turns out Giamatti has to be the healer because, well, symbolically it ties to his family and that dead horse is so kicked you can see the Nike symbol indented into it. It of course brings her back to life as the big Shyamalan twist is finally revealed. Oh my god. Reggie, Reggie, just keep looking at his eyes! Oh my god, it takes place at the cove! Wait, I already knew that. Why'd you cut to that? What the hell's the twist? He's the guardian. Reggie's the guardian? Wow, I didn't know Cliff Note could serve as twist now. I mean, uh, ooh, you really got me, ah! Uh, have to look at the movie a whole different way now. And then apparently, these things come out. I am Groot. Your ass is grass. <laughs> the eagles are coming! The eagles are coming! And no kidding! That's the ending. Yeah, the eagle picks her up, and it just stops. Even Giamatti has a look on his face like, That's it? Are you kidding me? My two-minute cameo in Downton Abbey was worth more of my time than this! People, I know the happening is fun, but where else can you see a narf outrunning a scrunt with Paul Giamatti waving his leg and touching himself in front of two women helped by a guy who can predict the future through crosswords who gave birth to a prophet who can read mythologies that are part of a complete breakfast with a critic who dares call this all insane portrayed as the bad guy with tree hulks beating up grass stains with teeth while a giant eagle picks up a whispering tart whose only job was to tell a person to write a book and the twist centers around a guy we saw only for two minutes in the opening. How can this not be a masterpiece of madness? Complete and total entertaining madness. So, to show my appreciation for this incredible experience, I am finally going to give Shyamalan exactly what he wants. You summoned. Sit down, Shyamalan. All right. about your genius method in making this film. Really? Well, I was trying to get across how creative artists are always kept down by cynicism. Ah, so the woman's story actually represent the artist's story. Yeah, I, I never knew if I made that clear enough. And am I correct in thinking that the character of the critic is a subtle jab to people who don't understand your work? Exactly. You don't think that came off too strong, do you? Of course not. I thought it was downplayed, actually. So I wanted to get across that all the people in the world who criticize, they're the real death of dreams. And how did you come up with those incredible names? It sounds like it came from a language that's existed for years. That was my intention! You see, I'm a big fan of creating other worlds, and other worlds have different sounding names. So I said to myself, what sounds weird and otherworldly? A narf. You just hear that word and immediately you think a beautiful